All right, so I've got myself set up here. I've got, these are the paints that I sent home. Uh, white, black, the primary colors, and green. Um, I've got myself set up here with, I like to have two cups of water when I do this. Um, one for cleaning my brushes and one for thinning my paint if I need to. Um, I've got a couple of brushes here. And, um, you know, if you don't have brushes at home, then use some Q-tips or anything else you can improvise. Um, I won't beat you up on the craftsmanship uh, if you don't have brushes, but hopefully you do and you get an opportunity to practice. Um, the, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with making tints. Um, now, if hopefully you've already taken your notes, that's what you were supposed to do before you started this. Um, tints change the value of the color by making it lighter. So a tint is a light version of a color. And when we mix paint, when we mix tints, there's a particular way to do it. Um, I've already started, and I encourage you to do the same thing, by taking some paint out with a clean brush, or you can use a, a plastic knife or even a regular kitchen knife. Um, but I take it out of there because I don't want to put a brush that has a color on it dipping into these. So, because if you get too much color mixed in, to these things, then you'll contaminate them and they'll start to get muddy. So I pulled out a little pile of white to work with and I pulled out a little pile of yellow to work with. And you see I started playing a little bit there already, but don't worry about that. Um, and when you grab when you grab things out of these pots, uh, use a clean brush or use a tool, uh, you know, like I said, a kitchen knife or something so that you can keep it clean and don't get cross-contamination in these colors. Um, so to make a tint, there's a specific way we do it. Don't put white into color, because if you want to get a tint, an almost white version of a color, you'll have to put more and more and more white in there to get it light enough. Um, so to make a tint, start with white and just get a little dab of the color. So we'll just get a little bit, just a little dot, tiny little bit, and now that is almost pure white, but it's got a tint of yellow in it. So to make the scale, I'm gonna start with almost pure white here. So it's just kind of almost a candle glow color there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the value scale of the tints by gradually adding a little more color to this pile so that it gets more and more yellow as it goes along. So you can mix uh, on a paper plate or even a regular plate. Ceramics clean up pretty easily with acrylic paint. Grab a little more yellow here. And so what you wanna look for as you do this is that it gets just a little bit more yellow with each square that you do. So that's almost white. It's getting a little more yellow with each one. And I don't know how well you might see the yellow in this video, but I'm applying this and so it should start off as near pure white on one side and end up as pure yellow on the other side. And I'm just going to go with that right there now. And so that's a, a tint scale. We've gone from nearly pure white to pure yellow on that. You'll probably see a more dramatic difference um, when I do one of the other colors. I'm gonna do blue next. Yellow is pretty bright to start off with, so I don't know if you in the video can really discern. Notice I, I use this to clean my brush, and then if I need to uh, thin my colors, and these are kind of thin already, so I probably don't need to thin them much. But I'm using a different brush. Again, you can use like a kitchen knife or, you know, a, a popsicle stick or something to pull your color out. So I'm gonna get, I've got enough white out here, but now I wanna make tints of blue. So I'm gonna pull out the blue and I'm gonna make a little pile of blue with a clean brush so I don't cross contaminate the colors. That should be enough to do this, I think. Get that clean again. Now my water looks green because yellow and blue make green, right? 
and I got most of that color off. Maybe I'll do a little bit of the clean water to make sure it's totally clean. Uh, notice I'm using a paper towel up here. It's good to have that. Again, so I want to make a blue tint. So a tint is a light version of a color. So I'm going to take a pile of white. Let's get this away from the yellow over here. And I haven't dipped this in anything else yet, so may, I can grab a little more white out of here with it. So I'm going to take this pile of white, and I'm going to add just a little bit of blue to it. Just a little bit. So that's almost pure white, but it's got a tint of blue. And it looks like almost pure white there. And I'm going to just gradually add a little bit more blue and a little bit more blue until it becomes a pure blue to make this scale. Kind of a big jump there, probably could have gone somewhere in between. Maybe I'll step back there. Here's the other thing about paint. Paint is very forgiving. Once it dries, you can paint over the top of it uh, to get it where you want it. Acrylic paint, when it dries, uh, dries you know between 10 and 20 percent darker than it looks while it's wet. So if you're somebody that gets into painting over time, you are going to want to keep that in mind and remember that you usually need to mix your colors a bit lighter than you think you need in order to get the color that you really want. Um, so you kind of have to play mind games with your paint. And the pure blue there. So there we go. There's a scale going from nearly pure white to pure blue. So making tints here. And part of this exercise is learning to um, mix color. It takes some practice to get good at mixing color. Um, and just like when we do shading with pencils, where when we mix colors and we change the values and make tints and shades, um, what we're doing is we're changing the value. And just like we, when we use a pencil and we change our pressure to get darker and lighter, um, and we change uh, the value with the pencil to get darker and lighter, making these tints and shades change what changes the value. So we don't just use pressure with a brush, you have to change, you have to mix the colors to change the value. Um, so for the red here, I'm going to do that one last for our tints. And again, I want to start with some clean pure white. And I'm going to pull it out of here so I don't have to cross-contaminate the colors in here with other colors. Because if you do that, you're going to just ruin your paint and not have it available to work with. Rinse off my brush, rub it on the paper towel. I'm going to get a little bit of a little pile of red to work with here. Just pull a little bit out. It should be enough. And you've got to make this acrylic paint I've gave you last over a couple of projects. So try to be conservative with, with what you have and be smart with uh, not wasting it, not cross-contaminating it, and making sure you put the lids back on so it doesn't dry out. So again, I'm going to start with tints of red uh, and a tint, light version of a color. I'm going to take, I'm going to start with the white and put just a little bit of red into it. Red's a powerful color. And of course, white and red make pink. So there's a pink there. So a tint of red is pink. Grab a little more paint here, grab a little bit more red to get that a little bit darker. That jumped pretty dark pretty quick, but I can keep working with that. That looks good. So I'm making value changes. And you need tints, you need light versions of colors. They're, they're important when you paint. Grab a little bit more red there. using a flat brush and kind of stroking with the side of the brush. Grabbing a little more 
red as I go through here. And you can mix this on a paper plate or some wax paper or some parchment paper. Or even a regular plate and let it dry when you're done working on it. Acrylic paint comes off, kind of peels off after you, it dries on something ceramic. So there's my value scale from pure light all the way to the pure color. I want to see a gradual change in value. If you mess up and you need to fix it, um, let it dry and paint right over the top of it. It's not a problem. Uh, but remember, for making a tint, you add color to white. You don't add white to color, you add color to white. The reason you don't add white to color, since I got a little color left here, I'll show you, um, is if you want to get a truly light version of a color, if you just add white to it, if I add white to that, well, that's not a big change. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Still not a big change, add a little bit more, a little bit more, still not changed enough. If you really want that really light, almost white version, you need to start with white and just add a little bit of color to white. So that's it for making tints. Try to get that scale from almost white to the pure color with a gradual change in between.